interesting article here. It's about a hoarder. Now, hoarders, I, I mean, I love that show. I'm sure you've all watched them. Some of these people's houses are, are crazy, right? Stuff everywhere. Floor to ceiling in some places. It's a disease, would you say? It's a disease. It is. Mm. It is. It is a disease. This one lady, had to, they had to call the ambulance because she ended up, I think she was sleeping. She would strap herself to the toilet mm. and that was the only space she could sleep. So she had to strap herself so she, she didn't um, fall off. Yeah. But she fell off one time and got stuck because there was just no, like there was no space. Anyway. I digress. A guy called Andrew Roberts lived in a house in Greenwich in Sydney. He, neighbours called this house the creepy house um, because there was just broken stuff everywhere. Um, Don't look at it yet. Broken stuff everywhere. There was uh, just everything, you know, in and around the house that they could basically see. Now, when he got to 60 years old, he died yeah this was back in 2017 so the neighbors basically saw paper piling up like mail Mm. and they called the police and said hey we're a bit worried about the welfare for this gentleman can you go check on him Mm. so police went they you know kicked down the door whatever they had to do and they discovered his body he he was actually like on top of a live heater and he was badly burnt and decomposing. Oh. So I don't know how he died, whether he fell and tripped on it and couldn't get off. I don't know. Yeah, I hope he wasn't. And, and the smell wasn't how they figured this out? Like, oh. surely that was I know, gone. I know. They said, the police said it was the worst case of hoarding they'd seen. Like it was just, it was so hard to get into the house. So police, they take away his body. Almost a year later in 2018, they started cleaning up the, the property. So... Cleaners were going through and they made a discovery. Can you guess what that might have been? Another body. Yeah. You agree? Yeah. Why do you say that? I don't know. Because you said it's you painted the picture like it was gruesome. So I'm just guessing. Well, they discovered Shane Snellman. Who? Shane Snellman. Who's that? I'm supposed to know who that is. No. Oh. He was a person. Mm -hmm. In 2002, he went missing. Yeah. And just a bit of background about him. He was uh, troubled, raised in Catholic uh, convents, um, loads of different homes, uh, in and out of jail. At 15 years old, he killed a homeless man. Oh. Um, Anyway, he'd just come out of jail for a, a drug stint. At the age of 39, yeah. he broke into Andrew's home yeah. and Andrew shot him in the neck. Huh. But because oh. Andrew's a hoarder, yeah. he just kept him there I get- for 15 years. Just in and amongst. Mm-hmm. Like, when, so was, his, was it just like the guy breaks into his house, he's like, oh my God, no, bang. And then, like, where he falls, he's like, oh, no, I, can't, I can't get there. I'm just going to leave him. Or no, did he, like, try and hide the body? He tried to hide the body because oh. he covered him with a rug and basically just left him there. And then around him was, like, 70 cans of air freshener to obviously try and conceal oh, the smell. Geez. Yeah. Um, but they said that he was basically found in, like, a mummified state. Um, That's got to be the laziest way years. to hide someone's body. Well, no one wanted to go in that house, right? No, no but one wanted to And they couldn't have got in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so he basically just covered him in a rug. And then one day he's like, oh, it stinks. Air freshener. And then like, yeah. that ran out and he's like, oh. Another, another one. one. Yeah. <laughs> just kept, exactly just kept right. adding them. That's crazy. That's absolutely. First off, how did he have a gun at hand? <laughs> yeah, because if he's 
Wait, this isn't even funny, by the way. But yeah, it's not funny. I'm, but, I'm, I'm actually yeah, curious. Yeah, if he was about... a hoarder and he's got stuff everywhere, yeah, how he must have had one. He must have had like his one spot which he always was, wherever that was, and the gun must be like. No, Simon Simon Snail. What's his name? Shane Snailman. Shane Snailman. What must have been so unlucky for him for what's his name? Uh, Andrew a- Andrew Roberts. Roberts to be at the 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 place where he hoards his guns. And Shane wa- breaks in through that area. Do you know what I mean? No, How much- because let's say typically the hoarders will have one place where they stay, right? Yeah. So if that's the place that he stays, he'll make sure he has his gun always there, right? So but that's the, what I'm the, saying. The Shane guy broke in. He might not have gone into that room first. He's probably thinking, what the hell? Where have I broken into? Yeah. And then when he's come across the guy, he gets shot. That's, so this is part of where my lack of understanding is, is I've never burgled a house. I don't know necessarily mm-hmm. what the thought process is that goes into it. But I think the moment I open or look through the window or open the door, I jimmy my way in, and I see I'm in a hoarder's house, I turn around and leave. Or you think, oh, there could in. be a lot of gems in this house, a lot of stuff I could get. I'm probably thinking it's a bunch of crap. I think I'm I'm on the side of Alexander saying that I if I it's not a place I would think there's expensive stuff in there. But then you said this guy has um mental issues. This was in an affluent area, by the way. Yeah, Greenwich. Greenwich he's, is, he's wealthy. This he's guy. wealthy. Do you have any more information about this? I'm just looking. Oh, it showed that Shane Snellman Snell had suffered a number of injuries. I don't get hoarding. How does it happen? Emotional baggage. It can be. But how can you have that much emotional baggage? Like, imagine having enough... Imagine how much stuff you would have to have just to fill your floor up in that room to a foot. Yeah. yeah, I can't. Like, I, I, that's I an absurd amount of stuff. It. Yeah. And that's okay. just one wrapped room in an to old blanket under a pile of debris. Like, we're talking people, like, all the rooms in their house, several feet high. Like, I just, I don't think I've owned that much stuff in my entire life. Yeah. Like, yeah I feel I like you can't, I feel I like you have understand. to purchase things to hoard. Mm. Or, or just collect. Like free stuff. The piles of rubbish and junk which fill the home apparently meant Mr. Robert's body was removed without anyone noticing Snellman's body. Um, a, a mobile phone believed to be an older model Nokia will also be examined for clues to Snellman's fate. He died of natural causes, did Roberts. And how come no one, no one... No one called the police. About what? The gun shot. They mustn't have heard it. it was, uh-huh. his, his house was soundproof from all the hoarding. Oh, because of all the magazines. And sometimes just... you do hear like a bang sound and you go, oh, what was that? Was that a firework? So the guy had was one that... of, he had 13 guns, by the way. Oh, my God. That's what I'm saying, Emma. Like, he, he would have kept them all in one place because it's funny, hoarders... This they're somewhat um organized. Like they know where their stuff is. Yeah. Yeah. Not everything though, because if you watch the hoarder shows, when like the ones where they bring it all out and put it in a big warehouse, yeah. they go, Oh my god. Wait. I don't know. The I finding had that. the finding that Mr. Snellman had broken into the Greenwich home devastated his estranged sister Belinda, who yelled, How dare you at the coroner and said her brother knew Mr. Roberts. What? That is that's a lot to process. Hold on. So the estranged sister of Snellman yeah. was claimed that Snellman knew Mr. Roberts. Oh, really? Wow. But how an estranged sister would know that? Yeah, because she, I read somewhere she, the sister hadn't spoken to him for decades when they were split up and he, well, that he went into the welfare system. 
So no unless, missing person's so report if, if was ever lodged. So if she knew that, either, even though they were estranged, they may have still had, like, I don't know, Facebook or something. Mm. Um, mm. So she knew what was going on. Or he knew Mr. Roberts for that long. Like, it was like a lifelong relationship. Yeah. Or she's lying. What's do you think it's sad that no missing persons report was ever like no one knew he disappeared because no one I'm getting confused have in I'm getting life. confused I don't know I don't understand this is it Shane Snellman or Bruce Roberts which one is Bruce Roberts the person that got, um got killed no he was the one that did no. the killing he was the hoarder Snell, he's the Snellman. hoarder and it's not Bruce Snellman's it's Andrew who... Roberts it says Bruce every time I put Shane Snell um uh, Snellman Bruce Robert always comes up to complete this um the Google search. What? Uh, Bruce, yeah, Bruce Roberts. The article I'm on says Bruce Roberts. Yeah. Oh. Did you just make Andrew. Up his first name? Oh, Bruce Andrew Roberts. <laughs> oh, I was going by his middle name. <laughs> <laughs> I was going by his sorry, uh, Bruce. So it, it it gets deeper now. So they knew each other, supposedly. supposedly. Wow. There are so many questions, but nothing's coming to my head at the moment. <laughs> Wait. Well, I had thought maybe heard the inquest heard Mr. Robertson lived in the house of Greendale Street for at least three decades, becoming the registered owner after his mother's death in 1989. He also inherited $1 million in shares, freeing him of the need to ever work. More than 600000 was in his account when he died. Oh. In contrast, Mr. Stelman enjoyed a transient life, growing up in a boy's home, struggling with drug abuse, being jailed on multiple occasions, dishonesty and property offences. He spent 10 months in jail, age 15, before being acquitted on a homeless man's murder. Oh, he was oh, acquitted. So he was acquitted. His last jailing, a one-year term for drug supply, ended in June 20, 2002. Three days before his last sighting, October 18th, he withdrew $1, leaving 66 cents in his account. The contrast between the lifestyles of Mr. Roberts and Mr. Snellman and the different locations that they were known to frequent strongly suggests that there was no opportunity for them to meet prior to Mr. Snellman's death. Further... Given Mr. Roberts' reclusive lifestyle and preference for little to no social interaction, it is most unlikely that Mr. Roberts would have willingly invited Mrs. Snowman into his home. The fatal weapon was likely one of the 13 guns found along with the wealth of ammunition at the home. The, the finding that Mrs. Snowman had broken into the Grand home devastated his estranged sister, Belinda, who yelled, how dare you at the coroner, and said her brother knew Mr. Roberts. So everything mm. points to they had no idea who each other yeah. were. But for yeah. some reason, yeah. the sister is saying they knew Said he knew him. Last, last ditch effort to um, save his brother's name. It sounds like it anyway. <sighs> yeah. See, there's, there's so That's much. A, that like, is an absurd story. Yeah. There's, this, there's so many um, gaps that you can, like, we can make up our own story. But it'd just probably be unfair. Because I've got heaps of stories. Isn't it crazy here. how you just might not know who's around the corner? You don't. Mm. You don't. And it's scary. Wrapping up another episode of the B side word, episode 122 ended with the discussion of the block con woman, New York bad prediction, and Andrew Roberts, which is Bruce. Andrew Roberts, we found out <laughs> later on. Um, the hoarder, the next level hoarder, mm-hmm. which with a tragic ending. Mm. Uh, and uh, just to let you guys know, the podcast format has changed and stay tuned for the unscripted, no, the open forum B side word coming up. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> that, was, that was a bit awkward. TBSW right. talk. Can you edit that to make it better? Yeah, okay. <laughs> the B side word.